What's going on, Coach? Hey, listen, I know everyone wants to talk about Alabama and how they have destroyed their chances of the college football championship for the first time in the Nick Saban era, but I want to talk about that. I want to talk about our boy Lincoln Riley, and while he may be one of the most incredible play callers and gutsiest coaches in all of college football, let's get into it. Look, Lincoln Riley was down in Texas, showed what to do under pressure in the clutch moments, and I want to dive into it. So, hey, if you like this, go ahead, give me a thumbs up and let me know where you're from. Let's dive into this. So, Lincoln Riley in the perfect offense. I really do think that he has he has transcended the air raid, and he is doing some things that are air raid-esque, but they're not throwing the ball as much as Mike Leach, and he's actually running the air raid to what more coaches in the high school level are trying to do when they say air raid. So, look, I mean, he is a stud. Look at him. No one could flex like this but Lincoln Riley. He was down in the Red River shootout, and then he pulled it back. But a couple of things. If y'all don't know who Lincoln Riley is, let me just – a couple of facts. One, he is 58, uh, 51 and 8 at OU. Seriously, that is an unbelievable record for anybody in four years, all right? And the amount of people that crap on him when he does some stuff, talking about he can't do this, he can't do that, is trash. I want to smack him in the mouth and, and, and just fart in their mouth as well, all right? He's averaged in four years since he's been the head coach. He's averaged 40 points a game for the entire season. Some close to 50, some just a hair over 40, but 40 points a game is an unbelievable offensive average right there, all right? He has two highs winners and he probably has a third one coming up because that quarterback that came in was unbelievable out of the four years he has been a head coach he's been to the college playoffs twice and he should have beaten Georgia the very first year took the pedal off his foot off the pedal allowed Georgia to sneak back in there and win that and go to the championship round but I think he's learned from it and uh, the best part about this he worked under Mike Leach Mike Leach saw something in him as quarterback he's like listen you're not a quarterback I'm going to cut you, but I'm going to bring you back on to be a GA because you were the freaking man, and that is what he did. And just look at the stats from last night's game, or yesterday's game. 55-48, people don't know, he came out 14-0 right off the bat. He's doing well. They had 662 total yards, 323 passing, 339. That is the definition of balance right there. Over 300 for both. 8.2 8.2 yards per play. Unbelievable. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over the touchdowns. So the very first touchdown they had, I love this. Set it up. So the first thing is they're in the goal line. They ran counter, and then they come back with a bounce. This is the type of motion I call bounce right here with the uh, running back. And then they're running inside zone to the left. They have a wide receiver and a wing set chip and then go for a pass. And then it is unbelievable. Here's a cut up of it. Hold on. Let me make sure that there. So look bounce it's pixelated it'll get there eventually let me see let me let me go ahead and do this because you know come on baby boom all right so they bounce motion over look wing two tight ends that is a very great set to be in on the gold line they're going to run inside zone he is going to chip right here so look everybody is up i don't he must be looking right here he's coming inside so he pulls it Now this guy gets it. But here's the thing. Here's the great thing about this. He has to cover either this man that's going out for a pass or the quarterback. He doesn't cover the quarterback. Easy touchdown. Now, you could do the same thing. You know? Your guys, you could put this into your playbook and do the exact same thing. There is nothing unique about that. So touchdown two. This is is what I would essential uh, duo. Put a new quarterback in. If you have a running quarterback, and guys, all these plays, you can put them in. You yourself can run these plays in your offense. That's the beautiful thing about what Lincoln Riley is doing. That It's not like the old Baylor where you have to have a guy that just bombs plays and can throw it on a rope 80 yards down the field and guys reading routes. He has boiled it down to the simplicity and dressed it up with motion. And that's what you can do. For this play right here, he actually has a running quarterback. And they're just running straight up duo. It's fourth and one. And he is running duo right now. I learned that from Nick Caduti and uh, J.T. O'Sullivan. But you just got one guy to miss, this guy. If you, The only thing you can do as a coach is put your best player on his best player, and hopefully your best player is better than their best player. And that is exactly what happened in this play right now. All right? So we've got... Come on, Google. <laughs> we ain't got no trash... Uh, Internet here. So we got dual. Put in a new quarterback. Everybody's going to be blocking down. 
and you just got one guy to miss. One guy got to make it, and then all of a sudden, boom. We all have that one player on our team that is very fast and can do it. And I'm going to show you the, look, great camera angle. Man on, man on, double team here. They have an actual triple team. 77, 9, and 18 are triple teaming to this linebacker. Digging him out. The running back has the uh, corner. You just have this safety and this quarterback right here to get it. Look, everybody's accounted for, washing them down. He's got a pick. He picks the corner one-on-one. -on -one. You make the guy miss. It is unbelievable. And then, boom. So you can put your quarterback in there. I mean, your running back, who is a running quarterback. He could get in there. He could do this exact same thing. I know a lot of y'all run duo. A lot of y'all run inside zone, which is uh, the bastardized ver uh, version of duo. This is what you can do to get your playmaker the ball in space. It was in the middle of the field. It's unbelievable what they did. All right, third one. Third touchdown, love it. It's like a switch version of curls. They ran a lot of curls throughout this game. This is another one. They have three by one early. They're running curls, sitting over the middle of the field, curling, and then a wheeling up. And this guy right here, this F, drops it. Now, I mean, uh, the, they forget the F, and he does a wheeling up wide open. Now, the quarterback drops the, the snap that might have influenced Texas, but, you know, knowing Lincoln Riley, he probably did this on purpose right here. So again, three by one, early set. He has got the curl. They're wheeling and up. He has got a curl route right here. It is a very simple. He dropped it. Keeps his eyes downfield. That is a huge thing right there. Coaches, you've got to have drills where quarterbacks are moving in the pocket and they're keeping their eyes down the field. Because what most quarterbacks want to do, I know you can attest to it, is once they drop it or once they decide to scramble, their eyes go down. They tuck the ball, and they're looking here instead of keeping it up, looking for the open man. And that is very important because if you don't keep your eyes up, you will miss this wide open man. So look, curling over the ball, out and up, curl. He drops it. Yes, that is fine. But notice how his eyes stay up. He is. There's color in this grass area. Don't throw it. There's color in this grass area. Don't throw it. But where is the color not? The color is not in the back of the end zone. Notice how his eyes are here. He throws it right behind him. Very simple. Now, you couldn't do that if you didn't work eyes down the field. And the great thing about eyes down the field, there was a drill for it. It's the scramble drill. Air raid coaches do this at least once a week where everyone scrambles. You keep your eyes up down the field, and then everyone has set rules of where they're going. If you're deep, you go to the back corner, and if you're on the, if you're low, you go to the sideline. Everybody else is trying to get in the quarterback's field of vision. That's it in a nutshell, and it is freaking amazing what you can do if you practice that once a week, and I promise you Lincoln Raleigh does that. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat. Chase, what's going on, man? How you doing? Coach Lili, welcome from Germany. Carlos, how are you doing, man? I hope everything is okay. DK, how are you doing, sir? I hope you're having a phenomenal, and that goes for all of y'all, uh, Sunday. So this is uh, the thing. I mean, simple, really simple. You got inside zone with a pop, you got curls, and you got duo. We all do that. It's freaking amazing, okay, what we can do based on this offense. This is not one of those things that you can actually look at Alabama and be like, hey, we can run that. No, you don't have Alabama's five-star guys, okay? This two-point conversion, unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was a cluster just to watch it. So imagine from the defense's perspective when they're actually running it. That is what this beautiful thing is. So you got motion up, oh, sorry. You got motion coming in into a bunch set. Defenses hate bunches. If you talk to any defensive coordinator, they usually only have one check when it comes to bunch. That's fine. You use that one check against them, which is the beautiful thing. So you bring him in motion. You've got a rub route by R, which is essentially a pick. But, you know, we don't call it that because we're offense. So it's just a, a sit route. The F is running a curl sitting in the zone, and then the Y is running an out and up. You're just clearing space to find the stuff out, all right? And as you can tell, it works. It's a simple rollout. I've noticed that a lot of coaches like to roll out on two-point plays. That is fine. So you're bringing them in motion. Now watch. He has got the out and up. He is 18, is just sitting there, and then you're just finding the grass with your guy. Boom. Boom. Right there. Watch it again. 
out and up to clear out this corner, picking the point man, find space between the two of them. That simple. This is something, again, that you yourself, as the offensive coordinator, as an offensive coach or a head coach, you can put this in and execute it. This can be your only two-point play. This is an easy pitch and catch for your quarterback. This is easy for your wide receivers to accomplish. You're making the defense think. That's the beautiful thing about Lincoln Riley. You're bringing in motion, so not only do they have to do a motion check, they have to do a bunch check, and then they have to figure out who's got what, who's got second contain, and all of that when you're rolling out. Those are three checks right there in one play. That is why it was successful, and this is something you can totally do with your stuff. And Kenneth, yes, short answer on Riley, yes, he is. I I completely agree, man. I freaking love what he does. All right? I know you all saw this. He called this play three times. Three different times he called this play. The triple counter direct QB uh, running back snap. This was amazing. We all have three by one with an H back. I know you do, okay? We call this king or queen. I know a lot of people call it tray, right or left, whatever it is. But he's bringing the F in motion. He is stealing another puller in this formation. It is unbelievable. He is pulling the guard. He is pulling the Y, the H back. He is bringing around, wrapping around a very big, strong, um, that sounds weird, but uh, slot receiver. And then when the ball is snapped, the quarterback is taking a go to the right, and the running back is actually catching it and then going. And what that does is you're bringing motion to the left, your quarterback is going to the right, and you're still bringing pullers to the left. He ran this at least three times in this game. So look, you're bringing in motion. With this guy, the slot receiver, you're bringing him in motion, and then the quarterback, look, is acting like he's got it. He's running away. What does that do to the linebackers? This linebacker's eyes here. This linebacker's eyes are here. This linebacker eyes are here. You are pulling three people with one fake. Touchdown. It's that simple, and we can all do that. You can put this in because you know why? You... Have the counter tray in your playbook. If you don't, there's a video in my uh, somewhere on my uh, page where I talk about the counter tray. You need to put it in, but we all have that. This is just a little wrinkle, something that you can practice that I promise you your kids are going to freaking love. They're going to love this thing, okay? You put this in, you're getting the eye discipline. You're seeing if the linebacker's eyes are very disciplined. They're not. No linebacker at this level. This is the collegiate level with 21 ranked Texas. You think a high school kid linebacker's eyes are going to be disciplined when they see motion and then the quarterback looks like he's getting a pitch? Heck no, it's not. So why don't you put it in? Try it out. You, it, It's unbelievable. And you know what the great thing is? He comes back and does the same thing for a walk-off game winner. The same exact play. The same exact formation. This, I mean, and we think as coaches that we can't do this on the high school level. Look at this. They're on the bot. This is incredible. Same position and everything for the walk-off game-winning touchdown. Now, how many of y'all, be honest, would have called a pass play with 10 seconds left on the 35-yard line close to it and tried to go for a touchdown? I know I would. I'm going to be completely honest. I would. So what does he call? He calls the same play that he's had success with. Look at this. That is incredible. That takes balls. That is something that you will see. This is gonna. This play is gonna go in with a lot of other teams. I promise you that. I may do it. I'm not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. That was sexy as hell. I may actually do this play. And this is a play. This is the biggest thing that I've taken away from this game. There's a couple more. Wait a minute. But this one. Call the same play over and over again. How many of us call a play? It's successful, and we never freaking do it. I know I do. And this just shows you that the best offensive play callers in football are calling the same plays over and over again when they have good results. So what are the takeaways from this? What can you and me take away from this game from Lincoln Riley? All right, one, get your playmakers the ball. That's very simple. I know it, I know we all say it a lot, but we really don't do it, which we need to do. Get our playmakers the ball in space. Two, special teams matters. That's, that's the biggest thing. They had a couple of key takeaways on special teams. Special teams plays a part. You got to fit that into your schedule somehow and really stress that. Uh, Three, don't freak out when you're down. They were down early, just like that. Lincoln didn't just abandon his play calling and was like, you know what, YOLO, we're going to throw it 80 times. No, he was methodical. He did what he was supposed to do. They stayed on script, and they just trusted the system. And that is something that we could take away from that. 
Don't be afraid to switch players out. Their quarterback was stinking, so they brought in the, the true freshman, and he was lights out. I promise you he was going to be the starter next week. I, I say I promise, but I, if I was a betting man, he's going to be the starter this week. How many of us would switch him out like that just to get a spark? Not many. We need to do that. And then the last one, which is I think is the key takeaway, don't be afraid to call the same plays over and over again. If they can't stop it, do it. Play the Madden. Hold triangle. Keep running it over and over and over again until they stop it. That is what Lincoln Riley did, and that is ultimately what won him the game. So it is unbelievable. Uh, Davis, I still think Lincoln runs it too much, especially on first down. I agree, but when, you, <laughs> when you're averaging 40 points a game, you're getting 600 yards a game, it, it's kind of hard not to. And that is that is one of the biggest things. I, I like that. He's taken, and you can kind of see it, his air raid style. He only has a couple of plays, but he's repping that in different formations and stuff. It's like a twist. I, w- I would say it's the new version of the air raid. Same concepts, getting not that many, uh, not using that many plays, but repping them in different ways so that your kids understand it. It looks different different to the defense, but you're you're doing it. It's kind of like what Noel Mazzoni says: change the presentation, don't change the play. And I think Riley is kind of taking that to the extreme with with the counters. He's the reason why I love counter, and if it's not broke, don't fix it. So hopefully you got some takeaways from this. Hopefully you enjoy this. Hey, I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a great day. And until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun. I will see you later.